Today's video is going to be on summarizing the 1976 Aaron's snow throw. I'm going to warm the engine up, change the oil. I have a hose that I put on the drain there. Drain the oil out, put fresh oil in because you get moisture in the oil. It's not good for the engine when it sits all summer. I'm going to change the gear oil in the gear case for the impeller. Lube up all the Everything that moves is going to get lubricated and I'm going to spray WD-40 over the whole machine. I'll drain the gas out of it, run the carburetor dry, get it all ready for sitting all summer. I'll air up the tires till I put about 30 pounds in them. Just over inflate them a little bit for the summer because they do lose air over time. That way in the fall when I get ready to use it for the winter they're not flat and ruined. Alright, I'll get it warmed up. Get all the fluids warmed up. I'm going to run the engine and the auger to warm up the gear case. And then I'll change the fluids and then we'll drain the gas out and run the carburetor dry and finish lubing everything up and be set for the sun. It hasn't been started in a couple months, so hopefully it takes off. This doesn't have a primer, so you got to just choke the prime. <laughs> engine run for about 20 minutes to get it all the way up to operating temperature. It mixes oil up and gets it warm so it drains out quick. And the same with the gear lube running the uh, impeller. There's just a pipe cap on a 3 8 inch galvanized nipple that started into the engine. Get that loose. Get the machine up a little bit. Take the cap off, shove the hose over the, the nipple, the drain pan, and there we go, the oil comes out of the engine. Quick, easy way to drain your crankcase without making a mess and loosen up the oil fill cap to let some air in that the breather may not let in. These are like square sockets right here for the square plugs. That's so why the oil's draining out of the crankcase, we'll get the get the gearbox draining. Turn the impeller fan so I can get that underneath there. A bigger one than that. This has a, has a two plugs in it, ton do. There's a little gear oil in the, should take the bottom one out first, but that'll give the ratchet a little bit of lubricant. get the gear oil out of the, and that doesn't hold a heck of a lot, out of the gear case. Okay, well I'm going to refill the crankcase. These take 20 ounces of oil. Put maybe 530 or 1030 in it. I have 1030, I don't have any 530, so it's getting 1030. You can see all the oil drain up and spilling out. Snug this back up. Get some oil in the engine. Then we'll fill the gear case up and get it outside and run again. Just topping the oil off. This is just saves making a huge mess by overflowing the crankcase. Some engines have dipsticks, 
some don't, this one doesn't. So you just fill it till it's right up in the top of the opening right, oil levels right there. Alright, we're going to refill the gear housing with oil. These are a little bit more time consuming because the oil is thick. Refill. And you can see that's like pretty good. And it stinks, gear oil stinks too. Get the plug tightened up here. Now I have this Quaker State 80W90. That's what I have, so that's what I'm going to put in it. Lift it up. These things don't hold very much. Let's put some in there and I'll tip it down. Unless that's full and the excess running out. I don't care if it has a little excess, you don't want it too full because it'll pressurize and blow the seals. Yeah, it's just kind of dripping out now. It only holds like an ounce. Holds very little oil. Tighten up the plugs. There is some grease fittings on the impeller. That keeps them free on the shaft, so if your shear bolts break these, the shaft can turn free of the impeller if you get a rat caught in there so you don't break the worm or the ring gear in there. This snowblower doesn't have hubs that pull off the axles, so some of them they have like a pin that holds the wheel on. You need to pull your wheels and uh, grease the shaft so they don't rust onto the shaft, so if you need to service the machine, you can. I find one pump per fitting is adequate on these. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the gas tank. So you want a container to put your gas in. And something to drain the tank. I use, I, I bought a primer bulb at a marine dealer and got some looks like quarter inch hose to siphon it out. The ones that you buy like at Walmart are garbage. You might as well just buy them and throw them in the garbage. This is a block I'll put underneath the machine to tilt it to make the gas so I get all the gas to one end of the tank and siphon it out. There should be enough gas in the carburetor to get it going and, and uh, get all the remaining gas out of the carburetor. I just siphon the fuel right out of the tank back into the can. It had about maybe a half tank in it. Pack it up, run the gas out of the carburetor, and it's ready to spray down with some WD-40. Oops, I guess I should turn the throttle on. stroke before you pull it. I'll do this until it doesn't fire anymore. This is where you can be liberal with the sprays because the engines run in the snow and ice and they tend to 
rust and this helps prevent them from and I spray everything. Get a rag or something you can wipe it, smear it all over. also kind of cleans the machine up a bit. You get the inside of the bucket and the color area pretty good too. Everything that turns, moves, spray this at it. Keeps it moving good. And I'm liberal with everything when it comes to lubricants on a snowblower because well, the fact that they do run in a lot of moisture a lot. Well, there we go, summarized snowball.